I want you to say I love crepes. Don't you say it, Ricky. These colors don't run. Wait, are they the real thin pancakes? Yeah. Yes, they are. They are the really thin pancakes. It's just a French word for them. Oh my God, I love Whatever those. Whatever syrups you want on them and stuff. Well, why didn't someone yell at it right, right away? Do you know what's in the crepe Suzette? Oh, I love the crepe Suzette. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Binging with Babish, where this week we're taking a look at a food discussed at length but not seen in Talladega Nights. The humble French crepe. 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 <clears throat> Excuse me. Crepe. My first job as a virile young teenager was making crepes, so hopefully I won't screw this up. To make the very simple batter in the jar of a blender, we're combining two large eggs, half a cup of water, three quarters of a cup of milk, three tablespoons of melted butter, a pinch of salt, and a cup of flour in this recipe from Alton Brown. The mixture is then pulsed on low power 10 to 12 times until just combined, scraping down the sides of the jar for any loose bits of flour, and pulsed a couple more times to make an extraordinarily thin pancake batter, which we're going to let rest in the fridge for one hour to get rid of any bubbles. Then then comes the question of buckwheat crepes. It's the exact same recipe up till the point where you're going to add the flour, where I'll let you guess what we're going to add a cup of. That's right, buckwheat flour, which not only produces a darker crepe better for savory applications, it's also gluten-free. Fun little fringe benefit, this, like the other batter, is resting in the fridge for at least one hour, at which point we're going to start to fry them up. The other times I've made crepes on the show, I've utilized a crepe maker, but if you don't have one of those, or if you can't find yours like I can't, which is confounding to me, I mean, how do you lose a crepe maker? I live in an apartment, for God's Sake, you can use a large nonstick skillet lubed up with butter. As you can see, the first crepe is sacrificial, just like every pancake, but the rest of them we're going to carefully spread out using gravity until it's nice and thin. Then we're going to let them cook for 30 to 60 seconds over medium high heat until they're just starting to become dappled brown, and then we're going to give them a flip. Give it another 15 to 30 seconds on this side until it's cooked through, removed from the heat, and get to stacking. Now let's talk about what to fill these guys with. Let's start with breakfast. I'm going to take my pan off the heat for a second so it doesn't get too hot, whilst I fry an egg sunny side up. A little bit of butter, nice hot pan, let her fry, and then when it's almost done, I'm going to make a single buckwheat crepe. Same procedure here for cooking, just spread it out as thin as possible, give it a flip, and then as soon as it's flipped, we're gonna start putting stuff on it. This crepe is feeling a little healthy to me, so I'm gonna go with a generous grating of Swiss cheese and our lovely sunny side up egg, which we're gonna drop in the center of the crepe and then fold four edges up around it. Does that make any sense? You can see what I'm doing, right? See, we took four parts of the circle and folded them in to make a square. I got a C plus in basic geometry back in high school. True story. Anyway, we're seasoning with kosher salt, freshly ground pepper, topping with a little pinch of freshly minced chives. This is going to bring some nice color and flavor. And this is going to be perfectly lovely on its own, but I think it's going to go very well with some of the homemade chili oil we made in the Kung Fu Panda episode. So a little drizzle of that stuff, and we've got a seriously charming, easy, and beautiful breakfast. A nice runny egg, some spicy chili oil, and a wholesome nutty crepe. Grab a couple picks for the gram. Everybody loves a runny egg on the gram. And so that has breakfast covered. But crepes are versatile enough for any meal of the day, so how about lunch or dinner? For that, I'm reminded of a simple mushroom and gruyere crepe we used to make at the restaurant that I worked at. So here I've got a five or six ounce melange of fancy mushrooms. I'm also going to finally chop a quarter of a small Spanish onion and a single clove of garlic. Then over on the stovetop, we are getting a tablespoon of butter nice and bubbly over medium heat. And into that, we are going to dump our onion and our mushrooms and let them saute for five to seven minutes, tossing occasionally and salting early on to help draw any excess moisture out of the mushrooms and cooking them until they're nice and brown and soft. Who doesn't love a good mushroom cooking time lapse? And then we're going to start amping up our flavors, adding our clove of finely chopped garlic and sauteing for an additional 30 seconds, seasoning with freshly ground pepper and optionally flambéing with a bit of dry sherry or cognac. They didn't let me do this in the restaurant because I was 15. So as you can imagine, these mushrooms were also seasoned with my tears of catharsis and fulfillment. But even with that, I'm still going to taste for seasoning before setting aside and keeping warm while we get our crepe ready. I'm going with the white flour crepe that can be used in both sweet and savory situations, then topping generously with Gruyere cheese and our mushroom mixture. Then we're going to do a much simpler fold this time that I can actually explain. Just roll it up like a flat, wide, open-ended burrito. See, that's street smarts. They don't teach that in high school geometry. I'm also just going to grate some extra cheese on top just to really drive home that there's cheese in this thing, and then I'm going to garnish with a few leaves of freshly picked thyme. And there you have it, a similarly easy mushroom and Gruyere crepe. And with that, it's time to start talking about the sweeter side of things, and no crepes episode would be complete without a Nutella crepe of some time. 
time, I'm going with Nutella and strawberry. So I'm just gonna slice up some strawberries, set them aside, cook my crepe as usual, and then after flipping, I'm gonna hit it with a big old dollop of this not Nutella other brand chocolate hazelnut spread, which we're then gonna dump out onto a plate where the residual heat of the crepe should allow us to easily spread the hazelnut chocolate stuff. Once that's evenly spread out to the edges, we're gonna top it with our sliced strawberries, and this time we'll go for what I'll call the double quesadilla fold. First we just fold it in half like a quesadilla, and then in half again. Can you tell that I had Mexican food for lunch while I did this voiceover? And then we're gonna doll it up a little bit with some whipped cream and chocolate syrup. Let's see if my very 90s decorative drizzle is still up to snuff. Oh yeah, still got it after all these years, Andy. And with that, it's time to serve. And crepes are usually just kind of vehicles for their fillings, but even more so in this case. The crepe has become little more than a delivery system for Nutella and strawberries. But what about a preparation where the crepe is more the star of the show? For that, we turn to Crepe Suzette. For this, we are melting three tablespoons of butter in a large saute pan, adding a bunch of sugar, I'd say at least two tablespoons, and then comes the zest and juice of one Mineola Tangelo orange. You can really use any kind of orange, but I like this because it's a hybrid between a tangerine and a grapefruit, so it's got great flavor and it's generally seedless. Then we're just gonna gently bring this mixture to a simmer, gently swirling to incorporate all that sugar, and then beginning to dunk our pre-prepared crepes in the liquid. Make sure that it's well coated on both sides of the bottom half of the crepe, and then lay it down and we're gonna fold it in half double quesadilla style. That one didn't come out so good. Let me see if I can do a better job with the second one. There we go, perfect double quesadilla. Rinse and repeat with two additional crepes and arrange them into a sort of a quadrant situation. Cook for about one minute on the first side before flipping to make sure that they're nice and evenly coated. And then we're just gonna let them sit in the pan for three to five minutes over medium heat until they're nice and caramelized on one side. The sauce is going to reduce and then almost disappear as the crepes become deeply golden brown and lightly crisp. Then we're taking this off the heat and arranging the crepes on a plate. However you like, I'm going with the triangles all pointed in one direction orientation. And then it's time to flambe. You could just do this in the pan over the stovetop, but as I learned from June's kitchen, it's way cooler to do it in a wine glass and pour the fire over the crepes when you serve. Definitely do not try this at home. Glasses can easily shatter and you will have a huge fireball in your hands. Alternately, you could light the alcohol in a heat-proof glass container and gently pour the alcohol over your crepes like this. A moment of silence, please. Oh yeah, that is cool. But like most cool things, it is dangerous. So again, please don't do this at home. Flambeing almost anything is 100% for show. You could just simmer off the alcohol in a pan and it would taste virtually the same, if anything less boozy. Anyway, safety lecture is done. So let's top this up with a scoop of ice cream, homemade from our $5 shake episode. And let's tuck into this 19th century French delicacy. And while it is awesome, I have had a lot of crepes today. So let's go expand someone else's waistline. Hey folks, I am very excited to announce that, oops, gotta stop doing that, to announce that my book is in stores today. And even more than before, I am super excited and proud to share it with you. This is the Binging with Babish companion cookbook and it features the first 100 recipes from the show. It's got lots of fun facts, beautiful burger models, gorgeous photography, peeks behind the scenes, and an extremely touching forward by John Favreau. I'm also starting my nationwide book tour today. I've got 10 stops. You can check them out at bingingwithbabish.com slash events. Every ticket includes a signed copy. I'm very excited to get out there and meet you guys. I'll see you on the road.
Yeah, 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 yeah